former special counsel Robert Hur's congressional testimony Tuesday about President Biden's mishandling of classified documents drew ire from both sides of the aisle. One camp said he unfairly came down on President Biden. The other side said he didn't go far enough. When asked by Representative Hank Johnson if Robert Hur identified as a member of the Federalist Society, a conservative legal group, he responded, I am not a member of the Federalist Society. I am a registered Republican. I can assure you and I can tell you that partisan politics had no place whatsoever in my work. It had no place in the investigative steps that I took, unquote. Let's listen. Over a five hour interview that he didn't recall how he got the documents. Congressman, I reject the suggestion well, that you let, have just well, made. Well, that is well, not let what me, happened. Let me move on. Partisan politics. You used your report to trash and smear President Biden because he said in, res in response to questions over a five hour interview that he didn't recall how he got the documents. Congressman, I reject the suggestion well, that you have just well, made. Well, well, that is well, not well, what me, happened. Let me move on. Partisan then. politics Sir, you are, you no are a member whatsoever in you my are, work. You are a my member of the Federalist Society, are you not? And fair. Are you a member of the Federalist Society? I am not a member of the Federalist Society. But you are a Republican, though, aren't you? I am a registered Republican. Yes, sir. And you're doing everything you can do to get President Trump reelected so that you can get appointed as a federal judge or perhaps <laughs> to another position in the Department of Justice. Isn't that correct? Congressman, I have no such aspirations, I can assure you. And I can tell you that partisan politics had no place whatsoever in my work. It had no place in, in the investigative steps that I took. It had no place in the decision that I made. And it had no place in a single word of my report. He went on to say, quote, Congressman, what you're suggesting is that I shape, sanitize, om om omit portions of my reasoning and explanation of the attorney general for political reasons. Let's listen. Congressman, what you are suggesting is that I shape, sanitize, um, omit portions of my reasoning and explanation of the Attorney General for political reasons. No, I suggest and, that you and, and not shape your report did, for political reasons, which is, is what you did. That did not happen, Congressman. That did not happen. Representative Adam Schiff questioned her, saying, you could have written the report with his comments, with comments about his specific recollection as to documents or a set of documents, but you chose a general pejorative reference to the president. You understood when you made that decision, didn't you, that it would ignite a political firestorm with that language, didn't you? You My could have written your general. report with, his, with comments about his specific recollection as to documents or a set of documents, but you chose a general pejorative reference to the president. You understood when you made that decision, didn't you, Mr. Herr, that you would ignite a political firestorm with that language, didn't you? The contentious back and forth over the report continued. Let's listen to Pramila Jayapal's response. And we, can't, we conclude the evidence is not sufficient to convict, and we decline to recommend I was just going to get to that. And you concluded that, Those quote, the evidence is not sufficient to convict, and we decline to recommend prosecution, end quote. Those are your words in the report, correct? Those words appear in the report. Thank you. Further, Representative Tom Tiffany said, so I want to thank you for the work that you did as far as you could, but unfortunately you are part of the Praetorian Guard that guards the swamp out here in Washington, D.C., and Joe Biden is part of that company of the elites. Let's listen. So I want to thank you for the work that you did as far as you could, but um, unfortunately you are part of the Praetorian Guard that guards the swamp out here in Washington, D.C., protecting the elites, and Joe Biden is part of that company of the elites. Maybe it's the inner contrarian in me, but the more Robert Hur gets attacked from both sides of the political aisle, the more I appreciate the job that he did, frankly, in this matter. Uh, I, I, is, that, is that crazy? I, I think he, he's kind of handled this all well it, and professionally, and people job. are mad that he didn't say, Joe Biden is the greatest person ever, and he should be reelected, <laughs> and his memory's perfect, and he has all his cognitive faculties on one side, and on the other side, they're mad that he didn't say, <laughs> Joe Biden was, was down there in the crack den with Hunter Biden, lock him up. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's, hard, it's easy to forget that this is a report about whether or not uh, uh, Joe Biden is kind of legally culpable for having taken these classified documents. And that, in fact, her report exonerates Joe Biden, like lets him off the hook for the substantive right. legal issues that he was up against. However, part of that rationale was that Joe Biden seemed more like someone who was 
forgetful and didn't know what he was doing and couldn't keep track of what he was doing as opposed to someone who was acting with malicious intent. And as we read yesterday, her specifically said in his opening statements that he, in, he included that language about Biden's state of mind because this is a case where state of mind goes right to the legal merits of it. And that he had to provide some explanation, obviously, to a conservative audience who was going to be perturbed that Biden was getting left off the hook for something that Trump was also investigated for. Yeah and that he needed to provide some grist for why he made that decision. But in a world where you have to explain, you know, explain that, what, what other way do you do that other than to say, I mean, the guy took the documents. You can't say, no, we didn't take the documents. You have to provide an explanation for why you don't think he's legally culpable. What is right. there a, apart from going to his state of mind? Especially and, given what's going on with Trump. You, yes. you do have to explain why it's, it's different vis-a-vis -vis the other presidential right. candidate. Exactly. And what Democrats are really mad about is that they have a candidate who has been so criticized for public moments of forgetfulness, losing track of where he is at the State of the Union recently, having mixing up the names of uh, presidents and the like. And countries. That he is under, and countries. And that is why he's under scrutiny. And people are questioning whether or not he's mentally fit to be president. They're mad about their candidate choice, not about anything that Robert Hur said. Yeah. And I think we we almost glossed over this a little bit yesterday, and then I saw some further discussion about it on social media. Um, it, it's now pretty well established that President Biden to be charitable, mischaracterized, perhaps just tried to deceive people in his what he said about the conversation with respect to his his son, mm. the death of his son. He said that I mean he got mad. According to him, Robert Hur brought this up and he said, you know, what the hell business of it is his? Remember that quote? Yeah. But now we can see very clearly from the transcript that it was Joe Biden who brought up that right. subject, who invited further questioning about it by bringing it up, you know, probably in an effort to make himself come across as even more sympathetic, remember that I lost my son, which that's a fine thing to do, but then later to say that, like out of nowhere, that caught up and I was put on the defensive and how I dare he do that, that is that is just manifestly not how it unfolded. That's right, he, he brought it up, one, as a kind of a time marker, because you know he remembers mm -hmm. that he was preoccupied, that he was sad, that he was dealing with something else at the time when he, he's trying to figure out if that was happening at the time when he might have taken these documents yes. as a kind of excuse. So yes, he brought that up to try to make it a sort of um, ex exculpatory moment for himself. But in doing so, he couldn't actually remember if his son's death happened at the time he was leaving office, which it wasn't. Right. It was happening in 2015-16, and we're talking about the events, events that are happening when he was getting out of office. And so it's on Joe Biden to explain why he kept mixing up, when was I vice president? When did my presidential term start? You know, is this actually even a legitimate excuse to be bringing up that I was preoccupied with the horrible tragedy of my son's passing, and that's why some of these documents got mislaid? At the end of the day, it worked out to his favor, right? Because her decided that he was not <laughs> legally culpable for taking these boxes intentionally, um, the way that someone argued he was. But you cannot have it both ways. Right. If it were a normal person who mixed up these dates, or someone, I shouldn't say normal person, but a person who didn't have all the baggage that Biden is bringing into this, him mixing up facts and dates in this deposition would not be a big deal. So again, the problem is Biden's priors, not what happened in this transcript. Yes, and I don't particularly have any desire to see Biden prosecuted for this issue. I've gone on the record saying before that I think documents are overclassified in a knee-jerk national security sense that often ought not to be classified, and, and, there's, and that's actually yeah. a blow to public transparency, the fact that multiple political figures of both parties seem to have kept things inadvertently that happen to be marked classified is, I think, be, actually just speaks to the fact that everything is classified sure. too much to not actually guard state secrets, to, but to guard potential embarrassment, or just that it's a habit of government officials to say, nope, you can't, this is, has to be redacted, this couldn't be released to the public, even if it's perfectly harmless. So I would rather actually attack that uh, sure. tendency of the federal government than go after people for fairly harmless slights that are just being committed all the time by all of our political figures. Um, now, but you've brought up that there are ca cases of people of less political significance absolutely being prosecuted for similarly inadvertently handling, uh, mishandling classified documents. So I, I would like to see some fairness for everyone on this front, but it's fine that they didn't, they decided not to bring charges against Joe Biden, but the explanation that Robert Hur offered, even if it's politically damaging, seems 
totally worth it to me, especially given that Joe Biden himself said something that was not true about the conversation. Yeah. And Democrats, um, I mean, that, they're trying to say, oh, you remember the Federalist Society, which wasn't even true, so we should discount you. That was some pretty it's, shameful it's stuff. It's beside frankly. the point. It truly, I'm no fan of the Federalist Society, yeah. but that truly was beside the point. All right, let us know what you think. Stick around. We've got a great show for you coming up next.